Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is on the new appointment of uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa, a 40-year-old uh, who has, of course, uh, been appointed by President Muhammad Dubari to head the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. There's so much controversy about his background, his time at the Port Harcourt office of the EFCC before he was uh, sent to head the Lagos uh, office of the EFCC. Controversy also about um, uh, who, of course, um, or what next for the EFCC. Um, um, Ibrahim Mago also, what may his fate be? We've invited this morning Mr. Sunday Odibashi to join us and uh, share his thoughts on this. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Great to have you here. So let's first of all get your reaction on uh, the part where it says that uh, he, uh, this is a, one of the appointments, you know, that has come to the EFCC that is not from the police force. Um, how vital is this perspective and uh, what difference does it make um, that uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa comes from a totally different background than the police? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, Mr. President has performed his constitutional duty in appointing the chairman of the ESCC, uh, given the circumstance that the former one has also been removed by his office. Uh, so it's not the duty of the Senate to proceed to the next stage of screening and confirming the new appointment. Yes. But oh. having said that, the profile of Bauer uh, shows he has experience on the job, uh, perhaps is uh, educated, so he probably might have, have the education and uh, the qualification. And um, he has been part of the commission from the beginning for a very long time. So um, it's coming at a time that people were also expecting, there were expectation of better service, better leadership of the commission, and transparency, including accountability. And um, these are expectations hanging on him. However, there are contra controversies and um, the issue of integrity burning hanging on his name, which perhaps will be the duty of the Senate to uh, resolve or reconcile the controversies. Because similar controversies came up when, the, when uh, Magu was appointed chairman of the EFCC, and the city there discovered some body, integrity body, and they did not confirm Magu. But the president, the presidency, let me put it that way, insisted that Magu must continue in the office, even without the confirmation of the Senate, which is unconstitutional. And okay, well. Um, um, He's appointing a new one with yeah, Mr. A similar uh, circumstances. Mr. Adibachi, I think I think we will get into these aspects. I, I think they are important um, uh, conversations to have this morning. But I, I wanted us to you know talk about the uh, tradition that has been broken now, appointing someone who is not from the police force. Um, is that in any way important, you know, with regards to the running of the EFCC and the direction the EFCC goes from here, if he is confirmed? Uh, well, it may not necessarily be important because Bauer himself has also been part of the system. And if you check the history, apart from Nuhu Ribadu, every other chairman of the ESCC have left with a load of controversy. Um, if uh, Besides uh, Farida, you know, the next generation, you will notice that they were forced out of the system out of the commission, if you like, because of allegations of corruption. So you don't fight corruption with corruption. So moving away from appointing either serving or third police to head the ERCC, but from the same product of the commission has not made any difference. And it's also coming with burden of the controversy that others had while they were there. So practically no difference. All right, Mr. Odibashi, before we go into all the controversies, you know, with his integrity, I want us to first highlight, you know, his, his resume, his profile, who is Bauer. Um, what the statement they put out was that he is a certified fraud examiner, that he is a certified anti-money laundering specialist. 
He was trained by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, the United States Financial Crime Enforcement Network. They say he was trained by the World Bank. He was trained by the United Nations Office of Drug and Crimes. He was trained by the Nigeria Police Force, the Nigeria State Security Services, the EFCC Academy, United Kingdom's Global Training Consulting. It looks like an impressive resume. And let's talk about his age. He's 40 years old. So let's, let's get your thoughts, first of all, on his experience, his training, and his youth and vibrancy. Someone like this, you know, being nominated to head the EFCC. Yeah, the, he has a very beautiful profile, no doubt. In terms of experience, he has gone through training, several trainings, as his profile tells us. So he has gone through special training within and outside Nigeria, so which equipped him for the, for the job. And the age also is there on his side to make him more effective. You know, so having said this, there is also a problem. Because with all these at his behest, he may not deliver as expected. Why do you think but, so? Because of the political influence on the institution of the EFCC. Not just EFCC, virtually all the federal agencies, they lack autonomy to perform their duties as expected or as assigned to them by the Constitution or the, the act establishing that commission. So if we remove political interference, we may see a gentleman that may be effective and efficient in service delivery. So the fear is that political interference. Okay, talking about this interference issue, political interference, the lack of autonomy, would you agree that maybe the EFCC needs an overhauling to be truly independent to perform its duties? Well, I think the legal statute that established the EFCC, you know, has that in a, in, you know, in the content. But the overbearing of Nigerian politicians for parochial reasons do not allow the institution to get these things done or function as being mandated by the act establishing it. So even when you overhaul, you may not until that interference is being eliminated. But yes, I agree with you. There is need for total overhaul and value reorientation such that when you are a staff of that commission, you do not use it for peculiar advantage or promotion of a particular interest that overrides the national interest. All right. There's, um, of course, we stated how impressive his uh, profile seems. Uh, but I want your thoughts on the fight against corruption in Nigeria that has struggled uh, uh, of course, um, the last uh, couple of weeks we've seen uh, Transparency International also rate us very poorly with regards to a, a corruption fight. Um, but I, what do you think um, needs to be done to ensure that we actually have a corruption fight that works? So regardless of whoever it is that takes over that position, regardless of the profile of whoever is charge of, in charge of the EFCC, if we don't have the structures in place that actually fight corruption, it, it, it may be a, a, a failed journey that we're on. So what do you think needs to come into play to ensure that uh, the corruption battle is successful? Uh, well, that is also the function of Mr. President to give firm directive to the commission, including the head of the commission, and again, fight from outside the commission using the administrative instruments that have been developed by the federal government to check corruption. You have the BVN. Yeah, we also have other instruments, you know, like, like the what is it called? The single account or whatever for the establishment. And you see, when those things function properly, the job is less for the EFCC. But again, the SCPC is also there. And with the SFU is also there. That is the police unit, special financial unit. 
So we have just all these institutions that are there, coupled with the, uh, the control mechanisms, you know, like the BBN, a singular account, whatever. And so when these things are functional, then you'll be able to contain it. But Mr. President, be fair. You must not bring in politics, either exempting a party member or a, a, a loyalist and others from the fight. Is it? Once you are seen to be corrupt, let the up commission go after that person and just get the job done. When during the Nubu Rebadu uh, administration, if you like, you saw the way it was fought from within. Even when people were accusing former president of Hassan job, you are fighting your enemies. Then you, those who were close to the president were picked up in the moment there was any allegation. It's not the same today. We look for a day that somebody opens his mouth and criticizes our president, and we say, oh, that's the, that is the corrupt man. You, you know, like you can see, you can see the case of Olisan Metu and all that. Look at what we, we are fighting corruption front and back. A senator was, it was, uh, and there was a judgment on a senator, he was jailed. Why in jail? The judgment was reversed, and they say, start retrial. Now, if you know that that judgment was wrong, what happened to the judge? Because it's actually comprehensive. If you are a judge and you give a corrupt judgment on a corruption case, you should also go in for it. All but right. if you were right, so, and there was a revision, a, a reversal, then what happens to that institution? Okay. So you see that there's a total of a whole, like you had said, you had said earlier, a total of a whole beyond the EFCC, the judiciary, the lawyers who are representing their clients, and everybody. All right, Mr. Odibashi, let, let's, let's also now go back to something you started with, uh, and that is the uh, part where the Senate needs, you know, to confirm uh, Abdul Rashid Bauer. Uh, do you think that the controversy over his time at the Port Harcourt Zonal Office and the things that he was accused of uh, might be a problem or might, you know, come in, into play here uh, for the Senate's uh, confirmation? Uh, well, it, it, the Senate has integrity to protect because if the allegation or the controversy is substantial, I think it may be enough to guide the Senate on their decision. You take the Mabu instance, when the DSS had to write a report indicting him, the Senate refused to confirm. The presidency insists it must be. And you see the way he ended. The same presidency now found the same Mabu to be allegedly you know, be involved in some practices that were not part of his office while he was in office. The same, uh, similar circumstance, circumstance is coming up now. So the controversy as it is now, the bodies of the Senate to prove that the Nigerian Senate has its integrity and their objective in performing their functions. If the president makes a mistake, it is the duty of the Senate to correct that mistake. So it may not be given that the president has nominated and that is final. So the controversy is for the Senate to evaluate and make a decision. We cannot make sure for them. Okay. If they make the right one, we praise them. If they make the wrong one, we criticize them. All right, Mr. Odibashi, staying on this corruption issue, it's a really big one here because it's all over the front page of the newspapers this morning. We see talks about the EFCC head and all the corruption allegations that have been levied against him. So the issue here is that he's been accused of diverting recovered assets. And one of the big issues that have been pointed out here is the case of 224 trucks that, you know, was claimed to have been diverted or sold by him. They also claims that his, uh, his uh, colleagues, you know, filed anonymous complaints to the EFCC headquarters for, you know, cases, corruption cases against him. But the EFCC spokesperson, Wilson Wajarin, has spoken up about this, saying that uh, Bawa has no corruption record, he hasn't been convicted of any crime, and that even the 224 trucks that was allegedly sold by him was auctioned after Bawa left the, that part of the agency. I don't know what you think about this, because it's seeming to me a lot like the Margo story, isn't it? Yeah, there, there appear to be a lot. Like you said, I agree with you. And uh, the EFCC ought to, to tell Nigerians, okay, he was tried, 
or this is the extent of their investigation, it was clear. But that was not done. Like I said before, most of the, our corruption fight is being overwhelmed with politics. You see the case of the former uh, CJM, where he, uh, the whole place was on fire, they wanted to get him out. After he left office, nothing happened. So we have a tradition that the moment there's sentiment against any public officer, then we, we the, the, boy, the noise about corruption on that officer is so loud until that person is either frustrated for a particular office, and the moment that goal is achieved, nothing happens. So the case is to have to have told Nigerians that on that allegation that the person was tried and he was declared innocent, and that is it. But that is not what the SEC is saying today. So they are just on the defensive to justify the appointment of the man. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Adibashi. It seems the bulk now stops on the, you know, the, that the Senate, you know, for them to screen him and make their final decisions on the issue of Bawa as the new EFCC head. So thank you very much for your thoughts and time on The Breakfast this morning. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day. All right, uh, we're now wrapping up this conversation to turn to the Department of Petroleum Resources and a media aide of President Muhammadu Buhari, yes. Bashi Ahmed. There's a controversy here that he's been appointed to earn salaries of over 400,000 naira in addition. So God knows how much he's earning right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people condemning this. would love to earn double salaries, wouldn't they? Well, let's get into that right after this break. Do stay with us. <laughs> 